my name is Laura McLean. This is uh, my name is Bugen Sivanason. And we created Prices Complex together. Um, Prices Complex is has came to, came about as a way of thinking through the kind of um, intensities of crisis that were occurring um, last year, and we thought perhaps this year. I think we um, we started looking at. Um, I guess various things that were going on in the world and the way that artists seem to be responding to them, or artists from those areas seem to be responding to um, ideas around disaster, um, also sort of personal crisis and, and personal catastrophes um, uh, alongside ecological disasters and as well as sort of financial catastrophes that have been happening at the time. And there were a series of works that I guess we were seeing that seemed to be kind of talking to each other um, without maybe you know, having been together. Um, and I think that's really how the process began, like really th sort of thinking through these works and thinking how they, they, they kind of interlink and what would happen if you brought them together and what they were saying around um, maybe a broader general discussion that was happening around, um, you know, crisis, um, that's, and, and also that kind of, you know, 2012 fantasy as well, I think that was kind of caught up in it. Um, so, um, I think the works here, are, again, are quite, there's a lot of works that are, that are quite specific that we'd, we'd ask for. And then there's also works that um, we'd ask particular artists to you know, create new work for it. So there is new work here as well. So um, it's a kind of interesting mix um, of things that we knew were going to be there and things that just kind of played out over that period of time as well. Yeah, it's been interesting that none of these works seem to be specifically about crisis, but one thing we kind of started to realise as it came together um, and was that they're all about kind of pathologies of crisis in a lot of ways. So we called our um, creative statement pathologies of the present. Um, a lot of it was kind of working through what was going on in very subjective ways. Um, for instance, Francesca Hines kind of works with the body a lot. Um, and the interesting thing with Takeyuki is the way kids are the way they project the future for adults and um, it's been Takiyuku was saying it's interesting because different kids in different places because he's done it around the world they all have different ideas of the future like American kids have really grandiose ideas you'll be famous, you'll be rich whereas Japanese kids say you know, you'll, you'll lose your bus ticket <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so this is Takayuki Yamamoto this work is called Telling Your Future I led the kids to create a new way of telling future by using their own method. I think when you think about your childhood, you, you will realize that you, you will, you, you've been always told what is good or bad. Do this or do that, or it was great. Or, but you don't know how the system that based on the adult telling you. You just know the details, which is good or bad. Like you can't shout in here, but it's good to speak like this, or you know, it, all those things. Uh, we don't know the whole system that, but adults are telling that with their whole various, various system, but kids doesn't know. So they're just catching all those details when they are told. But in this project, the kids are creating their own various system and then they tell the details to the adult. So in a way, it's kind of op opposite. And I want kids to experience like when they tell them to create the new fortune telling. They, you know, sometimes they go really nasty. They just keep doing nasty thing, writing nasty thing. It's fine because when they tell this to the adult, you can see they're really like feeling sorry about it. But they can't do anything anymore. So since they create all those value systems, so it's based on the value system they made. So if you pick the bl blue card, then you break your bone or something. But you can see they're really sorry to tell that. I want them to express this 
thing. So they know the saying good or bad based on certain value system has a kind of risk. I want them to express this, uh, experience this. And so that's the whole thing, I think. You know, I think what I do to the kids is like just telling them keep thinking by, by yourself. You know, don't stop thinking is only thing because most of the adults that they believe stop thinking is uh, getting adult or something. Well, well, I, th I don't think adults and kids are so much different. You know, I, I think adults, when they see this work, they feel more like, like them, themselves. It's, there are no differences between kids and adults. That's what I think, do we? I mean, we are not really developed. We didn't have so long time anyway. I mean, just 20 years, 30 years from them. Yeah. Nothing, right? Yeah. yeah. I guess the, the little succinct little byline I've been using for the last fortnight <laughs> has been that, you know, we look at, you know, crisis complex, complex being a, a kind of a state of mind, like a psychological state, and complex also being a broader sense of uh, you know, social, political, and ecological forces that bring around this kind of uh, sensibility around crisis. Um, and uh, I think there was a point too where it, um, we were thinking that it really seemed inescapable, that you didn't really have a lot of, with these broader, huge kind of disasters that that you, you didn't really have any sort of personal agency in. So how artists were kind of working through these issues themselves. So um, work like Adam and Norton's, which is just like an obvious kind of retreat into the wardrobe kind of work. Or Francesca's, which again is much more of a, um, a kind of performative, but a kind of almost masochistic style of, of like really working it out of the body. Um, I mean, I think Tony's work was also one of the first works that we thought about because it, um, I guess when I first saw these works, they almost felt like a conspiracy theory, but then over that period of time, they, they started to read more like, the, you know, as things really were, um, as, you know, the financial crisis put, played out and as all the kinds of, um, you know, the inquiries into sort of corporate crime and, and you know, corporate sovereignty in um, the face of that kind of crisis. Um, and I think that was also one of the other things because both of us were overseas a lot and where there is this sense of um, where that, that kind of financial crisis was really being felt yeah. in parts of the world where, and that did play out as a kind of really personal kind of pathology. Yeah, I've been living in London and the, I mean, Occupy, is, it's been really interesting that that has happened in the time frame of putting the show together because we've had such a long leading period. And over there, um, you know, people feel like they really have a right to be pissed off and they have a good reason to be pissed off and I got really pissed off and the atmosphere is very, very much more doom. So it's been really interesting to come back to Australia um, when this show is kind of almost up and running and to see the very different atmosphere here. I mean, one thing we kind of talked about in our brief essay was that Australia has a mu it has less crisis than the world at the moment. We're in a pretty healthy economic position um, and there are ongoing issues that it's funny to come back to and they're still there and they're still a problem and they're going to continue being a problem um, like boat people and indigenous issues that are complex and will not be worked out in the foreseeable future. Mm -hmm. um, and these are very specific to this, to this island we're on. Mm. And I think as we thought through that too, it became around, as you can see, there's lots of sort of interplaying issues going on, mm. but uh, we became very interested as how art uh, in itself can address these, these complications, you know, not necessarily having to solve anything, but actually work in a way where, uh, you know, these complicated issues can be kind of discussed. Um, and, and also in really strange ways, like I think, um, you know, I think, you know, sort of Takeyuki's response is, is just very 
in one way it seems sort of totally unusual, but then at the same time when you're actually working with the children, it makes a lot of sense. And I think a lot of his logic is around that, well, how much of what you get taught at school is really true? Like, what's the difference between what I'm teaching you and what you're getting taught? You know, you're still, I'm still teaching you skills that are going to be useful in life, even though they might not be um, immediately apparent, <laughs> you know, or... or, or um... I think different works play to different aspects of the complex of crisis. Um, Hugo and Heidi's I found really a nice optimistic kind of um, note to the, to the show. Um, they've gone to, they've gone and found sites of fennel around the city where fennel grows wild and they've collected the fennel and um, boiled, boiled up um, cups of tea in public spaces and they've had public exchanges um, where they've had people, they've exchanged um, cups of tea for stories of survival. Um, so, so it's, the work is kind of inspiring I suppose in a way. It's not solving anything but it's it's creating positive pathologies, I guess. Other than, <laughs> kind of other, rather than just lamenting the present. Yeah. Um, and so then they've gone back to the site where they collected fennel with little catchphrases from people's stories and installed the signs there. Um, and then so with these bird houses, they've got photographs of those sites of fennel with the, with the signs there and they've got these maps so you can go see them yourself. So it's, it's quite a, there's a lot going on in this work and I think it, is positive without being um, stupidly optimistic, I suppose. Yeah, I think there's yeah. a sort of sense of, a kind of sense of humour, maybe. Yeah. More yeah. Than, I think the uh, show, show generally has a sense yeah, of humour. Yeah, I don't think it was as doom as, as we initially thought it, it might be. Um, and yeah, it's definitely about, I think there's a, a real sort of, at least a kind of a humour or a way of, um, Again, working through these ideas, you know, working through the, uh, the complexity of crisis, you know, that people are 